What are the first steps an injured worker should take to maximize their worker's compensation claim? One recommendation I always can give is get an ambulance. If you got hurt, don't just assume you're gonna get better. If it's bad enough that it's a reportable accident, call an ambulance. Calling an ambulance does a lot of things that helps you. It creates a record that you had an accident and that you were picked up by an ambulance. As we've said in the past, ambulance call reports show where you got picked up and where you got taken to. They give a history of what happened. They give a history of the injuries that they assessed and treated at the scene. It really provides a very strong foundation for your claim and it provides very strong evidence that you had a work-related accident. So calling an ambulance, super important. And that also goes to my next point here, which is giving timely notice. Under the workers' compensation law, you have 30 days to give written notice to your employer unless they have actual notice of a claim. Calling an ambulance or having your boss call an ambulance or having a coworker or a supervisor call an ambulance almost always satisfies the notice requirement. It gives your employer actual notice. There's an ambulance here. What the hell's going on? Well, Mike fell down the stairs while he was carrying a box. Now your employer's on notice. So the notice requirement has been satisfied. The next thing you wanna do is file your claim right away. Just like you don't wanna be a tough guy and think everything's gonna be okay. If there's a problem and if it's more than just a scrape or a bump or a bruise, get your claim filed. It always looks a little fishy, a little funny, a little weird when an accident happens and a case doesn't get filed until six months later. If your injuries are that bad, why didn't you file when it first happened? The judge is always gonna ask that question. The insurance company is certainly gonna ask that question because it looks fishy to them. When you get hurt, see a doctor, give notice to your employer, file your claim, don't wait. And if that means calling a lawyer, call a lawyer. Your workers' compensation attorney knows the system. They know how to file your documents. They know how to get everything done in a timely manner. They know how to adhere to the law. A lot of us work closely with doctors who know the system. If you have trouble finding a doctor, we can help you. So getting to a lawyer is gonna help you make sure you're covered, you get your treatment, you get your case filed, and everything gets satisfied so that you can just focus on getting better and getting back to work. What's the most important thing injured workers can do to maximize their workers' compensation claim? You're gonna to wanna to make sure you find a workers' compensation doctor, a doctor that is coded by the workers' compensation board that regularly practices workers' compensation, that understands the system. Workers' comp has its own form, is its own way of doing things. Those doctors need to be prepared to testify in certain circumstances. They need to comment on permanent disability. They don't just treat you and bill and move on to the next patient. There's a lot more to it. So you wanna make sure you have a doctor that understands that and understands how important is medical record keeping and his treatment and his maintenance of your files is going to be to you and your case and to you getting benefits. So it's not just finding any doctor, you wanna find the right doctor. Seeing your doctor regularly is something that's also very important. Not only does it maintain your benefits, but it strengthens your medical record. We always hear about gaps in medical. If you're talking about settling a case, the insurance company's gonna say, well, what are you talking about? This guy can't be that hurt. There's a huge gap in his medical. He didn't treat for six months. You know, it doesn't look right. And the insurance company's gonna use that against you. And unfortunately, a judge might use that against you. Under the workers' compensation law here in New York State, you need to show a medical report providing evidence of a disability for every 90 days that you're out of work. So you need to see the doctor at least once every three months if you're going to maintain a claim for ongoing lost time. That's the bare minimum. You also want to keep up with your doctor's treatment plan. You know, workers' compensation case, money, all this other stuff aside, getting hurt's not a good thing. You want to put it behind you. You want to move on. You want to get better and move on and go back to work. So following your doctor's treatment plan, getting better and getting back to work is the ultimate goal here. What are some necessary evils that injured workers must tolerate in order to maximize their workers' compensation claim? Number one, cooperate with the insurance company. You gotta cooperate with the insurance company. You gotta attend their IMEs. An IME, as we all know, is an independent medical examination. It's an examination set up by the insurance company by a doctor of their choosing for whatever reason they want. You gotta go to your IMEs. Sometimes people think that it's a given that the IME doctor's gonna lie and why am I even gonna waste my time going there? Well, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and let's let your lawyer do his job if he does lie. It's my job to go after him and take him down. Failing to attend IMEs regularly looks bad. And failing to attend IMEs regularly is a basis for a judge suspending your benefits. So don't do it. Other necessary evils. You want to disclose prior accidents, injuries, claims, disabilities, anything that could have any relation to your case. If you're claiming a back injury right now and you hurt your back 10 years ago, make sure you tell your doctor. Make sure you tell your lawyer. Make sure you tell the insurance company doctor when you go see him. When you file your initial claim, Claim, there's a line that asks, have you ever hurt the same body part and had treatment? Make sure you're truthful there. If you lie and they catch you, they are going to go after you with everything they have because if they are successful, you will no longer be allowed to get workers' compensation financial benefits ever again on that case. So it's worth it to them when they catch you lying. Don't lie. Other necessary evils, we've talked about it before, surveillance. It does happen. Sometimes it helps to change your day-to-day -day activities and just be a little bit more mindful of what you do. You don't want to be doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Even with a back injury, you still want to pick up your kid 
kids and take them to the park and play. If you're not supposed to be doing that, don't do it because it's not good for you. Another necessary evil, taking light duty work when it's offered to you. And there's a fine line here. If your employer is offering you a job that is in alignment with what your doctor says you can do, you really have to consider going back and giving it a shot. Because if they're going to give you a job that your own doctor says you can do, you really don't have much of an excuse for not even giving it a shot. And to be completely frank, sometimes it's worth it financially. You generally do better working than not working. But you got to be careful and you got to be mindful because sometimes they'll offer you a light duty job that's in accordance with what the insurance company doctor, the IME doctor has recommended, which might not be the same as what your doctor said. So you need to be very careful there. But it's always worth consideration. It makes it look good for you to at least consider a light duty job. What are some simple and easy things injured workers can do to improve their workers' compensation case? Gather evidence. When your accident happens, when the dust settles, when the hospital stabilized you, let's pull together some evidence just in case it becomes a problem. If your boss sent you to the store and you're on your way back and you got into a car accident, the receipt from the store might be evidence that you were doing a work errand. With workers that are hired for very brief periods for very specific jobs, if there's some sort of proof you have that you worked for that particular employer during that particular time when you got hurt, business cards for your employer, pictures of the truck that he picked you up in, if he made you wear the work t-shirt with the company name on it, like we do here, all that stuff. It doesn't seem like much, but it shows proof of your employment. You know, we've had cases where people are paid in cash and it's hard to prove what you were earning when you're paid in cash, but the cash that they received came in an envelope with the employer's name and it had the worker's name scribbled on the front and the week written in the corner. Well, guess what? That was great evidence that that guy worked that week for that employer. So any evidence that shows that you worked for that particular employer, that you were injured on that particular date and time, evidence of the injury itself. Keep it, hold on to it, share it with your attorney. Avoid oversharing and overuse on social media. Social media can hurt you. If you're claiming that you're hurt and you can't work and they have you on Instagram going to Six Flags with your family and going on roller coasters, it's not good. The same way insurance companies put surveillance on people, they also will check out your social media. So be smart. Don't just up and quit your job. Don't retire from your job without speaking to your attorney. Job abandonment is sometimes a defense and they'll say, well, he quit his job. So any lost time that comes after that time that he quit is not compensable because he quit. He wouldn't quit anyway, whether he's hurt or not. So talk to your attorney about issues like quitting your job, retiring from your job, resigning from your job. Avoid communicating directly with the insurance company. This is your lawyer's job. If an insurance company calls you because you just retained an attorney, they don't know that you have an attorney, be very polite, be nice, say, oh, I'm so glad you called. I just want to let you know that I have a lawyer. His name is Rex Sikowski. He is not only a great lawyer, he's also very handsome. Please call him with any questions that you have and he will help you. That's all. Be nice, be sweet, be kind and give them your lawyer's number. Make sure you communicate regularly with your doctors and your lawyers. Let them know what's going on with your life. Let your doctors know how you're feeling, how your injuries are progressing, how your treatment's going. Talk to your lawyers. If you're anticipating a return to work in the near future, you want your lawyer to know that. You want him to prepare for that. You want to make sure that when you do, he notifies the insurance company and the court. So make sure you constantly keep in contact with your doctor and your lawyer and don't run your mouth in court. When you do go to court, don't say anything that you're not otherwise asked about, hey, judge, I want to say something. Make sure your lawyer knows what you're going to say before you say it, because you never know what could hurt you. And if you have any questions they want to talk about, give me a call 212-406-8989. We'll do everything we can to get to every question. What pro tips do you have for injured workers trying to maximize the value of their workers' compensation case? Don't always jump on early settlement offers. You know, insurance companies like to dangle the carrot. They know that you're out of work. They know when you need money. And sometimes they know if they throw an offer at you, you might just jump on it. If you have an attorney and you have any questions about the value of your case, make an appointment and sit down with your lawyer. It's simple. Go through what your case is valued at, where there's value, where there's not value. You know, a lot of people think that they're entitled to money for certain things where they're just wrong. I haven't paid rent in six months and I owe $10,000 in rent, so I need to get at least $10,000. Well, that's not how it works. There's no value in how much your back rent is. So speak to your lawyer, talk to your lawyer. Don't just jump on the first settlement offer that's made. Another thing you want to do is when you do settle your case, settle when the time is right. There are good times to settle and there are bad times to settle. You want to try to settle when there's still enough honey in the pot, when there's still treatment that's left, but you might not necessarily be looking for more treatment. And when it's possibly uncertain as to what the overall permanent value of your case is going to be, your lawyer knows when to settle. So speak to them, settle at the right time, return to work when you can. You know, as much as we talk about people being disabled and hurt and out of work, if and when you're able to return to work, especially with schedule loss of use cases, arms and legs, hands and feet, returning to work sooner rather than later oftentimes results in you putting more money in your pocket overall. Workers' compensation only pays a fraction or a portion of your salary for each week that you miss from work. So going back to work is always helpful. File appeals on cases where it's necessary. And this is another reason, again, talk 
talk to your lawyer. On the average, 67% of workers' compensation claims that were initially denied are eventually established as commensable injuries within 12 months. So when an insurance company says no or they deny your case, get a lawyer, go after them, and pursue your benefits with an attorney who knows what they're doing. You have a very good shot of getting what you're entitled to. So don't just give up and walk away. And with that, folks, if anybody has any questions about anything whatsoever, give me a call anytime. I'd love to hear from you guys. 212-406-8989. Thank you again for the fantastic questions and I'll see everybody next week.